gentle reminder to remove your address before you start filming an unboxing video. Love you. Hi everyone, it's me, J. Whitney Art, or Jessica as you're more than welcome to call me. And my first video back, I guess, since what October was, is an art snacks box review for the month of November. So full disclosure, I was gifted this box by Art Snacks. So I am going to just let that be known now. Um, but feelings that I share with you all are going to be genuine. But I'm sure it's gonna be great things in this box, or usually are. Yes, I have a box cutter, but I used this because it was in reach. Full disclosure. Okay, so here's an unboxing. So we have the items in this zipper pouch and we have a sketchbook. So this is a Fabriano mixed media paper. I actually really like this sketchbook. So we're off to a great start. So I misspoke, this is actually an Art Snacks Plus box. It comes with usually like a surface this green bundle of items and a few like more premium items and of course candy is that white ink okay okay so we have our two menus here um the art snacks menu has amsterdam acrylic ink princeton bella touch series synthetic brush karen dash super color soft aqua pencils i actually use those i like those and the plum chester 1.5 fine brush pen which is an art snacks exclusive i feel like those are the items that are in here so let's open that up <laughs> My dog thought I was opening up some treats. Not today, Cody Bear. So we have our sticker, uh, Focus. That's cute. It's kind of like an ombre. It kind of looks like a watercolor situation. Put that here. This is our, oh, I like this color. This is the uh, Karen Dash Super Color Soft. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Some stuff fell out of, hold on. <laughs> Okay, my dog just made a bunch of things fall out of the closet, but it's okay. So this is the Karen Dash Colored Pencil Super Color Aquarelle. So that means it's, this just says soft. It's water soluble color pencil, okay? So this is color Periwinkle. I don't know if you can see that, but I promise this says Periwinkle. <laughs> I like this color, it's kind of purpley, which is my favorite color. And here's our Plum Chester 1.5 Fine Brush. Fine Brush. That is pretty neat. So it's kind of like a calligraphy type pen situation. And we have our quarter inch stroke Princeton Velvet Touch brush. This is the one that has the, like this portion on the end. I, I wonder if this is a design choice or if this actually has a purpose. I might look into it, but this is what it looks like. It's a flat brush. I wonder if this is specifically for like watercolor. I'll look into it a little bit more. The last item is going to be acrylic ink um, Amsterdam brand highly pigmented and versatile thickly applied like acrylic paint or thinned with water oh that is askew I don't know am I traumatized from inktober to even try this one <laughs> we'll see so that's all from the regular art snacks box and the next items are from art snacks plus and here's the menu so we've got the faber castell pit graphite matte pencils 10 set of six so that's this here and there's the faber castell dust free vinyl eraser and then the fabriano 1264 mixed media art pad this is a big one too it's not like 20 pages, let's see how many, or 60 pages in here. 110 pounds, 160 GSM, seven by 10 inches. Medium tooth, resilient surface, ideal for detail work, easy erasing, and acid free. Like I said, I've, I've used this before. I actually really like it. We have this bubble Ziploc baggie. And finally, our airhead. It's a watermelon. I had a slight addiction to airheads when I was younger. It was kind of my go-to candy because I don't like chocolate unless it's like got some kind of nut or like filled with caramel or nougat. But plain chocolate? Yeah, no thanks. <laughs> I don't even like, I don't like hot chocolate that much either. But airheads, pretty cool. Okay, so let's play around with these. Before we move on, I'm gonna just open these. 
pit graphite mat. Oh, okay, so I've seen someone use these. Apparently, they keep your graphite from getting too shiny, like not having a glare. So we've got 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, 10B, and 12B. I don't know if I've ever used more than a 6B, but that'll be fun to play around with. All right, let's do it. Okay, so another item of full disclosure. Since I already have one of these, I'm going to use this instead so that I don't have another newly started sketchbook that doesn't have much in it. Um, but yeah, I've done a few things. I did this, I have a video for that. Yes, okay, so that's what we do. Pre-inktober stuff. Let's make sure it's the same. 110 pound, 160 GSM, mixed media, 60 pages. I feel like it's the same. Yeah, except this one is like super fresh. The barcodes are the same. So forgive me, I'm gonna use this one instead of starting this. I might gift this to someone. I'll think about it. Thanks for understanding. We are just going to play around. AJ, I need my apprentice. Come here, hand me one of, there's, two jars of water right there. Just one. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm gonna use this so we can test out this water soluble color pencil. So let's just play around. I think it would be cool if you like used something else maybe to outline the work I guess and then just use this for like the shaded areas. Because more than likely it's going to disrupt all of this line work. We will leave this here and we'll do some other supplies and then I'll come back and I'll line it with one of the the ink pen I think that we have. So I'm concerned about the alcohol ink because it's white and our paper is white. So I'm assuming that we would have to be covering an area that was already colored in. We don't have a lot of dark items. Okay, so this is our tester face to see what it looks like for blending and shaded areas. The next item is this, what is it called? The fine tip brush pen. So it's got lots of variation depending on how much pressure you give it. It doesn't look like it's super black. Well, I guess if you don't put so much pressure on it. I don't know when it dries, it looks a little grayish. I don't know if you can see that. Here, you can see this one's darker in the areas where it's overlap. That's not really a big deal, I wouldn't say. Yeah, it's not as, not as dark as it could be. That's okay, yeah. Um, Line work on our face here. You know what would be a good test is to see if it water resistant or not. We're gonna find that out together. Okay. So, okay, it doesn't look at all disturbed by, well, a little bit. It's faint, but work in this. Yeah. So I think we would have to kind of work kind of backwards 
do the inking last. But I do like this. I like how it's, you know, just kind of quickly filling in those areas. And I can use what's on the brush to color in these areas that I hadn't even shaded in. Okay, so that's not too awful bad. The side over here got really muddy. Okay, so that's the three items that come in just the art snacks. Let me make sure that's correct. Oh no, it's it's the acrylic ink as well. Okay, so this is the one where I'm not quite sure, you know, <laughs> it's white. So let's put it down just right here and see if it makes a difference on this paper at all. Can you see it? I can see it. Okay. So like I said earlier, I don't know if I am all that interested in doing much with ink because Inktober just ended, but it is kind of cool that it's white. It looks like if I brush it all in, it's completely blended into the white paper. That's not a big surprise. Let's play around with it on these filled in surfaces. So I still have this from last month. Okay. Oops, so my head not. Like the gold that I used last month for a few of the paintings doesn't work on the nib. That was kind of something I was a little nervous about. It's coming out now, but I have to put a lot more pressure on the dip pen. And the thing about that is I don't want to change the shape of my, my dip pen. So let's try thinning it off. You can get a little moist before using or before dipping it. Hopefully it does, because that would be kind of cool. But now I have to be creative. I have to come up with something to do with the ink. Okay, um, sure. So it it kind of always seems like in these art snack boxes, there's going to be an item that maybe you don't care for, not because it's bad, but maybe it's just so far outside of your wheelhouse that you have to figure out kind of what to do with it. That's okay. I think this, we'll use this as an accent if anything else, or if nothing else. I don't think it's gonna work with our friend here. I'm gonna try one more thing and then I'm gonna leave it alone. So I have these, which I'm not gonna say they work better than the, the regular dip calligraphy pen, but it's a different mode of distribution, so maybe it'll be different, who knows? Now, okay, so that's better. Hold on, let me get some coverage. I'll be right back. Okay, so we have a lock of dark colors. So let's draw a Christmas tree. Dang, I was really optimistic about this. Ah. <laughs> it's either too much or it's not enough. So of course it'd be great for, you know, kind of accenting some things. I don't see myself filling a page with all black in order to use this, but this would kind of be about the only way that it would even be visible, other than it being used as accents. You can put some stars. It works. It doesn't not work. It's just kind of going to be about what ways will it work best. So we have a interesting little tree situation. It's interesting to me. It is very gorgeous to me. I'm trying to tap it to like spiral down. Maybe it's too thick for using with a dip pen. Either way, it's a tree. Last two items to kind of play around with are these Faber Castell Pit Graphite Matte. I guess they would just be graphite pencils and this dust free eraser. Let's look at this really quickly. So it's introducing graphite without a glare. Faber Castell Pit Graphite Matte pencils feature dark matte graphite specifically developed to reduce reflection on paper. They're ideal for monochromatic graphite work, offering the highest tonal value density for maximum depth. The set of six contains a variety of pencil grades 2B, 4B, 6B, 8B, 10B, and 12B. Okay, and then there's this. So let's open this. Kind of uh, rubbery, that makes sense. Dust free erasing for black lead pencils. So let's just try these. Okay. So my fear is with these that they won't be dark enough. Kind of move this around, see if we see any glare. I don't see any glare, which is super neat. Maybe I should get another one, um, a different like brand or type, I guess. 
because I might have some other paper castell graphite pencils that do not have this matte finish. I wonder how they achieved this. I don't know much about the making of art supplies, but it would be really cool to kind of see what makes these different than the regular ones. I guess the higher up they go, kind of the softer they are. Is that why they're different? And of course, we're gonna have to do some erasing. Kind of like darker the further down you go. I didn't really play with the gradient on that at all. <laughs> I guarantee I do not need more pencils, but this is kind of kind of cool. Okay, hold on. Let me see if I can find another one. I have some of my big box of stuff. Let's get a 2B. see a big difference. Uh, I can see it. I'll show you in a second. These are Derwent sketching graphite pencils. You can totally see the difference. It's kind of, it's, it's a nitpicking issue because unless you're really staring at a piece, you don't even really notice the glare, but it's cool that if it is an issue that you have, that it will resolve it. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there's definitely a difference. That wasn't something that was bothering me, but if it is bothering you, I definitely can vouch for that actually working. Now we're just gonna see how well this erases. We'll try to, oop, oop. It erases really well, but I guess it's not dust because it's vinyl or something. Definitely not mess free. So the paper itself says it's easy for erasing, so that could be a contributing factor that it's mixed media, but it's not super toothy, which makes it a lot easier to erase things. <sighs> not perfect. If I am using pencil, I kind of use a way, way, way less pressure. So this is more the pressure that I would have used and you know, that I would need erased. It erases this better. I don't know if that, uh, whatever they do to it to make it matte, kind of hold it deeper into the fabric of the paper. This is pretty much gone here. And there's still some leftovers on this side, but that's okay. <sighs> I rarely make finished pieces that are just out of graphite pencil. It's kind of always where I start, not necessarily where I finish. If this were the case, this would be a pretty decent eraser. Clean and soft erasing. Okay, so let's do a little voiceover just to kind of get through this illustration. I try to make these videos shorter, but y'all just let me talk and talk and talk. <laughs> this part of the video is sped up to like 900%. So um, we're just gonna get into it. So I asked on my Facebook, so this is just, you know, people I know in real life, what I should draw for this video. And one of my very good, very, she is an old, we've just been friends for a long time. Um, my old ballerina friend, she suggested ballerinas. So I was like, okay, that's awesome. Uh, you know, I, I asked this before I knew it was in the box. So I didn't even know that it was going to be a purple. But when I think like ballerinas, winter time, the color purple, I am thinking nutcracker. <laughs> so this piece is very heavily, heavily, heavily influenced by the, I want to say like, over 10 it had to have been like maybe 15 years that I was a ballerina performing the Nutcracker and in my last you know I switched studios that's a long story but in the last couple of times that I'd done the Nutcracker I was in the chorus for um the performance of snow and flowers and in flowers we wore purple and of course in snow we wore white but it would be you know myself and probably like five to eight other dancers, you know, performing, you know, in the synchronized fashion. It's just in my mind, I am remembering it. And I'm not sure if these are good memories or bad memories. <laughs> There's definitely something about performing, you know, the Nutcracker when I was younger that I definitely have very fond memories of. So her suggestion put me kind of in that mind frame. And I'm like, okay, well, let me just come up with some kind of a way to have, um, a chorus of dancers but when I started 
when I actually started the sketching, I was just saying to myself, let me just go ahead and do one main ballerina and then some in the background. So I started with the purple, um, the color pencil, and I spread that around with the paintbrush. And then I used the black, um, what's it? Fine tip brush pen to do kind of the outline kind of shadowy area. And then I decided to use you know because I'm thinking ahead to the inking portion and I needed to find some way to make there be you know dark background areas so that I can add the snow like I was thinking initially so I took some of the graphite pencils and I covered kind of the background in that and then I went over it with the purple my thought was that I would be able to blend the purple with the graphite and that was going to be you know kind of the dark parts of the stage and luckily it worked out fine it worked out perfectly fine um i couldn't get the graphite to kind of blend on its own with water but for some reason putting the purple on top of it created a whole other solution and it it just moved around really nicely it gave it kind of a i don't even know what effect to use to describe it but it gave it a really cool effect and i very 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 happy with how this part of it turned out I'm very happy with all of it you know as a whole I can't think of any improves necessarily I only wish that I had given the dancers in the background a little bit more depth because they kind of look like ghosts but moving forward <laughs> because I, I still really like it so I used the end of the paintbrush how I said it was kind of a dagger to add in the stars and I went back in with my um, glass dip pen and just kind of swirled those around to give it a little bit more character and added a little bit more dot and you have this beautiful flurry of a snow ballerina moment I hope you guys really enjoyed it I really enjoyed making it um, I think I'm about to come back but yeah that's what we have Here we have it, we have our snow ballerina. I love how this turned out. I'd love to know how you think this painting, drawing, illustration turned out down in the comments. Please, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And as always, thank you so much for coming. Share with someone, share with anyone. And I'll love you even more than I already do. I'm tired and I'm out of practice with <laughs> making videos. I took about a month off after posting just about every day so uh, please give me grace <laughs> um, I really like how this turned out but I want to hear how you guys feel all right guys that's November's art snacks plus unboxing and play around have a good one I'll see you guys later bye